This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we do some 3D tracking. Welcome to Film Ride, the show takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. I'm going to serve your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And as you may know, back in the beginning of February, we flew out to Vancouver to shoot five action scenes in collaboration with DJI. We aren't quite done with it yet, but we're very close and still talking to them about when we're going to release those bad boys. But we are very excited about it. Can't wait to get them out to you. And I think you guys are really going to dig it. Well, I hope so, at least. But now to completely change the subject, we are currently in our new studio. We moved in a few days ago. It's pretty freaking awesome, but also insanely messy. And as you can see, there's still a ton to set up and to clean, which brings us to the rest of our episode. Today is a rewind, and I know what you're gonna say, really, another rewind. But this is gonna be the last rewind for a while. It's just with the studio and the DJI project, it was pretty impossible to put together an episode this week, but we didn't wanna leave you guys with no episode at all. So we figured we'd show off some 3D tracking we did a few years back, which I still think is pretty fun. But next week, we get back to the sexiness, I promise. And I love you, but now enjoy some 3D tracking. Be gone. So the first thing we're gonna look at is does your footage even need 3D camera tracking? Not all the shots in the opening sketch had 3D tracking on them. Some of them were just the motion tracker right inside of After Effects like this shot here. Since this is a stationary shot, just handheld, but keeping the same point of view, I can just go to the tracker, hit track motion, select position and rotation, then select two points at a distance where you want your track to be. So I'll select this area over here and then this one and then track forward. Oftentimes you're gonna go through and make minor adjustments on your track, but this time it worked perfectly. Now I'm just gonna create a null, set your target to apply to that, and then apply. So now all my tracking data is on that null. So I'll throw something into the scene, then parent it to the null, and tracked. I doubt it. No way. That's what I was thinking. Now we could go a bit further with this track as well by adding scale. Take this shot for instance. If we go through all the same steps, but this time we add a check into that scale box, now our null will have the additional data from the scale and you will get this which is just the text actually increasing in scale to appear as though we're coming closer to it. So there's a lot you can do with the simple tracker, but maybe you need to go 3D up on that mother So here we have a shot with more movement, something you wanna slap some camera tracking on. Well, the first method I'm gonna show you is by using the built-in camera tracker for After Effects. This is one of my favorite additions to After Effects too. All we need to do is right click the clip, hit track camera, then AE goes to work analyzing your shot, which we will get some progress loving up here until bam, done, tracked. Now I flip open my advance and we can check our average error, which here we are doing pretty well right at below one. Basically the higher this number is, the sloppier your track is gonna be. So you wanna stay low. Anything around 1.6 and under is workable, but once you get to 1.6, it's getting a little dicey, but you definitely wanna be as low as possible. If you're getting a high number, try giving the program some more data, like adding in the solve method, the shot type, if it's zoomed, fixed, and click here on the detailed analysis. This will take longer, but as it says, you're gonna get a more detailed track. Next, I'm going to find an area to create my null, which for what I'm trying to do, I think this will work best. So right click, select create null and camera, and your scene is set. And I'll play forward just to see, and you can see here that the null is looking pretty solid. So now I'll bring in my object, place it where it needs to be, and we have this. So Adobe's built-in tracker does an amazing job, but sometimes you come across a more difficult track. And for that, I turn to another plugin, which we'll talk about after we thank Daddy Warbucks. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, or innovator, domain.com is the place to go when that next idea hits you. I know you've heard that the list of available domain extensions is growing, but you now have the opportunity to name your site and build your brand in ways that was never before possible. Choose from a growing list of 400 plus domain name extensions like .com, .org, .design, and .club. And, dot, and we're to show in you, studio now. No, just be quiet. Because we're just, in the studio. No, no, no. Shh, shh. You don't have to interject. I, just let me. Well, no, I was... Do my thing. I was just... Just drink, studio, drink your sippy cup. Drink your sippy cup. The one's in your hand. Sippy cup. To show you some love, they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices by domain names, by web hosting, by email. When you use the coupon code FILMRIGHT at domain.com. Check it's out... It's like really cool that yeah. we're in a studio, though, just, right? just sip your apple juice and... Sh okay. It's not apple juice. And what is it? Apple juice. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. 
Logo. So we did some simple tracking, then 3D camera tracking with Adobe's built-in tracker, but now what if you need to get more precise? Well, the tracker I love using most is Camera Tracker from the Foundry, which is slightly more complex, but still pretty simple to use. So here we will take the same shot as before and add Camera Tracker to it. Inside the panel, you can see that I have a lot more options, but the first thing I'm gonna do is hit Track Features, and now the plugin will play through your footage finding all the good tracking points. Once it ends, it will go backwards and refine. Once it's completed tracking, I'll hit solve camera, let it go through its process, and we get our data. So here we have the reprojection error, and like before, the lower, the better. So I'll hit okay, and then create scene, which will set everything up. I get my camera and the null in there. But now, similar to before, I will select a point near where I want my text to be, command right click on a Mac, then create null. You can also come down here and use this menu as well. And now I can add my text again, set to 3D, shift pick whip to the null that I made, and bam! Bam where? Another thing you want to keep in mind when picking your point is the frame error. So when you hover over a tracking point, it gives you all the data you need. The lower number, the better. Of course, this point here will work great, but this one, not so much. So make sure you're picking solid points or you're going to have a lot of headaches. And of course, be sure that you're picking points that are at the distance that you want your object to be. For instance, if I pick one back here, my text will appear to be with those cards in the background, not the one in the front which is a great thing for compositing, so just keep that in mind. Okay! But now what if your track isn't coming out well? Well, there are a few things that you can do, which I can't cover them all here, but most important are adding in more info for your track, which you can do here in Solve, Lens Distortion. The more data that you can give the plugin, the better job it's gonna do solving your move. And the second is creating a mask. If you have something moving in your scene that isn't part of the background, like this car here, you can tell the plugin not to track that by creating a mask. To do that, first we're gonna create a white mask, throw it on the bottom, then with that selected, we mask around the car and keyframe the mask path to follow it as it goes. Then we pre-compose the solid layer, making sure that you send all attributes, including the mask, into the pre-comp. Next in our plugin, we're gonna set the matte source to matte alpha, then set the matte layer to the solid layer you made. And now we have to track again, but this time the plugin's gonna ignore the area that we just created the mask for. Then I'll solve camera and you'll see that our error number has gotten a bit better just from that small bit. So just make sure that if you have something in your scene that's moving that may confuse the track, just mask that shit. There you go, those are the basics to get you tracking your little heart out. And of course, there are other trackers out there like PF Track, and I'm sure we'll get into those down the road, but these are the three that I use the most, so, you know. Baby wear! So that's it for today, keep it crispy all the time, and I'll see you guys next week when Billy Zane ruins me and my wife's sailing trip.